This brings it all back. I just got 16 years for attempted murder. In November 1978, and 10 years concurrent for possession. And when I come in here, I come in here with a man, a well-known Republican called Tommy Gorman. We had first, whenever we, Tommy had got done the day before myself, and the screws waited until there was two of us because he knew my trial was ongoing, and I was it was near con the end conclusion. I got sentenced and they said they were bring two of us down to one time rather than bring one down then the other next day. So Tommy Gorman and I got brought down from the common road down into his blocks. I remember our first experience. Our first experience was when we were brought into the admin room. The screws obviously thought this was November 19. 78, snow was up to the, the windows, very, very cold. Screws obviously thought we were going to wear the gear. They asked us what size our sh shirts were, what size our shoes were, what, what our waists were. The screws came out and Tommy and I were both in separate cubicles, sat us down our gear. And after informing them, we already knew that we were going to the blanket. <laughs> We'd made our mind up that we wouldn't wear the prison gear and would go on the protest. Once the screws sat us down our gear, we told them that we weren't wearing the gear. They went bloody buckling in the administration room. Some of the names we were called started pushing us about a bit. One in particular, one older one, was not so bad, but one, one of them was very vociferous. He was very antagonistic, he was very aggressive. And they then got us our blankets. We were put in the van. Brought here to H4. Two naked men. I can remember walking in these here, and there was a welcoming party for us. Of nice gentlemen. The screws. They must have had a hard day because they were very, very volatile. I can remember as one of the ones, Tommy and I, getting brought over. Two naked men, forced against the wall, asked to stand with our hands against the wall, our faces to the wall. We stood here. Tommy stood. All this screws behind us, abusing us, slaps, kicks around the legs. Tommy and I would have just looked at each other. With all the verbal that we were getting, we would have said that, fuck you, we weren't standing against the wall and we turned. Face to face with the screws. The governor. I 
obviously aware of all what was going on. Blind eye. We've been allocated ourselves. And we were physically beat from here, the screw circle, straight through from here as the screws were lined up. Gates open, gates closed. I got to here. First encounter, turn in the A wing. Turning down the into here. I was in there's no pool tables at the an arbor as we seen. Boys blanking me over here. The smell is horrible. And it was physically bit, slapped the whole way down until my cell. My first encounter was with a man. This was an uproar, a welcoming party. All ex-prisoners, all prisoners, all ex-volunteers, all in dirty protest. A welcoming party, welcoming you. Looking around me. I can remember the cells. Look at my own cell now. Jesus, hard of two men. Living here. I remember my welcome, Tommy, Tommy Donaghy. Provisional IRA volunteer from South Derry, Kilray, South Derry, who later got shot dead. Tommy, the screws opened the, screws opened the door, told me if I needed to push the, out, push the bell and they'd bring me out immediately. Tommy was sitting doing a crap in the corner and his first words to me was, Jesus, Jimmy, we've been waiting on you. Walked into a cell full of excrement, full of dirt, full of, oh, horrible. You just looked around you, you seen One of the work creeping around the ground. Screws the mattress in. Your blankets were here. Smells of stench. 
At the time, there was no grills in the windows. You stood with your head, trying to get a bit of air. The snow was up to the windows. I was going, fuck, what am I doing here? Facing me, looking out. Face me was Buck McFarland, Papa Gillen, all people that I knew from the man, all people that I knew. Tom. He was just. Tommy was just so, I think he was just relieved that he had someone as company. We also had another member, God, this is so small. So, that's so small. It's, For the period of time I was in here with Tommy, some was very funny. I don't know how I found it funny. And I sailed with shit, if that's what you want to call it, on the wall. Piss all over the place. It's, it's just brings so much back. No beds, with no beds, with no tables here and I, shelves here, chairs here. No beds, no, sh no nothing in here. We're just removed from society. How the system was letting us as political prisoners. How one man decided with a stroke of a pen to take away political status. Marion Rees, March of 1st, 1976, for men to fight for the good of this extreme. And eventually 10 men down. Well, here was I, a political prisoner, who was entitled to political status. My charge was from 1975. The system through the 
assist them through various disputes with the screws and so on. Decided to remove me from the cages, put me in the punishment block, and I ended up here. When eventually getting sentenced in the H block. I'd spent my remand time in H1, H2, some of the screws whose names I can remember through my remand period. One of them in particular, who was a hateful bastard. He was the SO security officer who wasn't shy even in remand of wanting to physically beat, beat a prisoner. Um, one of the other ones that sticks out mostly in my head was one hateful wee fucker called who done everything for the slightest, the slightest trivial little thing he could do to impose some type of punishment upon a prisoner, even on remand at the time. He was he wasn't a sentenced prisoner in the H1. Eventually, in the H1, whenever the prisoners I had decided that this was um, during my remand I had spent. We decided that we would go in support of the prisoners by refusing to slap out, refusing to wash. I think maybe that was a warmer on my remand for what was ahead of me by coming into here on the blanket. We used to just, myself and Tommy, we would just walk up and down in this small confined space and talk. We used to just walk up and down and talk. Some of the things I didn't, some of the things Tommy talked to me about Kilray, I think Tommy thought of ourselves as people from the big smoke beer from the city. But he was very, very much interested. Very intelligent man. Very concerned. Very concerned, man. A period of time in here, you had all the time in the world to, to think. And also worry as to what, what were the screws actually going to do. They were renowned for their beatings. remember the screws used to move us from wings to wing they used to only three wings were used in the head splash used to steam steam clean one wing so they did I remember at the time whatever happened with myself whatever happened with the screws then decided during a change that When we were being moved from A wing and the B wing, from A wing and the B wing, you had to run a gauntlet, a line of screws either side, 
in my words, hateful bastards, vicious bastards. What could they do? What more could they do to us? Is this what it was down to? Physically beating us? Was it not bad enough to what we were doing ourselves? We were solely removed, we were straight removed from society. We were serving our time. This is a wing that could be frightening. Once you removed, you were chased into your wing. When you were moved around, my period was spent facing me. At times I had back back far and put me going. Sometimes on the switch, when the screws were changing around, face me was Kieran Nugent, the first blanket man. Kieran was born and reared two streets from where I, where I lived, in the Falls Road. Knew each other well. Kieran at the time was a professional area volunteer.